there are many different kinds of anthropic principles. A fascinating one is the final anthropic principle, which seems to say, seems to go well beyond the traditional anthropic principles and say that once life emerges, it will never die out. How does that principle work? Well, I think some of the other formulations of the anthropic principles are really methodological principles. I think what's known as the final anthropic principle is just wishful thinking. Uh, it's the hope, really. I mean, there is no evidence for it. Um, it's a possibility. Maybe the universe is such that life continues forever. Maybe it's not. Um, so it doesn't have at all the same status as the other. It's just a hypothesis. Um, now, um, It looks currently, um, although these are somewhat unsettled matters in cosmology, that uh, it will be impossible for uh, information processing started at any given place to continue infinitely. The universe is expanding and most of it will recede beyond our event horizon at some point and then entropy will start to, uh, you know, whittle all the structure down and in the end things will just peter out which is a rather depressing uh, prospect especially with the expanding universe now accelerating mm. so the cosmological constant which uh, which seems to suggest that there are parts of the universe that we will never be able to reach and there is just this finite amount of universe that we could theoretically get access to the resources in and in the end, that finite bubble of resources, we will have used it up, basically. It will become entropy, and then we'll die out. So that's how it looks. Now, there is a kind of caution to be attached to these things, which is that <clears throat> uh, cosmology is still a bit in flux. There are, we don't have theory of quantum gravity. These things kind of change every decade. There might be some loophole that <laughs> nobody has thought of. So we don't really know for sure. Maybe some clever uh, scientist or engineer a million times from now will come up with a way that you could get around these constraints. But right now it looks kind of um, uh, impossible for intelligent life in an again place to continue indefinitely. Um, I mean, there is a kind of not perhaps very reassuring possibility, which would be that although any given civilization must go extinct after a finite period of time, that life as a whole somewhere in the universe might continue to exist uh, indefinitely. Um, so one goes extinct and somebody else survives for it longer and then those go extinct and there might be another. Um, so that's a separate question which you could also consider. But there is no principle that says that life has to survive forever um, in either of these two senses. Um, and that's just something that we might hope is permissible by the laws of nature and maybe it is or maybe it isn't. Is there something we can learn from the fact that as far as we can see, there are no civilizations, no indication in the universe of, um, of life or of artificial intelligence that, that we see. I mean, we see very little, but the, the fact for what we do see, we don't see any, any other civilization other than ourselves. Is that, is that piece of data at all useful? because our, our observations are so limited. Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those very important data points. Um, and what it tells us is basically that, because we know that there are lots of planets out there, stars and planets, um, billions and billions of them in the universe. Um, and so we know that somewhere between there being a planet and there being a civilization that colonizes space and spreads and, you know, far away into the galaxy, there must be some one or more filters, improbability filters, basically some stage of development which almost all um, planets or civilizations fail to make it through. So the filter might be that even if you have a planet, it's very unlikely that even the simplest replicators will start on the planet. So no life at all. Maybe, maybe that's the big improbability. It just happens, you know, once in 10 to the power of whatever uh, planets that this occurs. Or maybe the filter is further down the road from the step from single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms. Uh, or maybe it's somewhere else. 
Um, so this is why um, you remember a few years ago when there was this these people who thought that they might have found traces of life on Mars, these, this rock that looked like it could contain some extinct life form. And most people were really excited. I hope, like, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could find this? Um, and I was hoping that we would turn out that it was not life. I think it would be very unfortunate, bad news, if we did discover any kind of life. Uh, in the solar system. Why? Well, because if you think of this um, picture again with the planet, the space colonizing civilization and the filter somewhere in between, fundamentally there are two possibilities. The filter could be somewhere between the planet and where we are now, that is before us, or it could be somewhere between where we are now and the point where we become capable of colonizing the universe after us. We sure don't want the filter to be after us, because that means we still have to face it. And by definition, it would be a very powerful filter, so we would certainly, almost certainly go extinct at that point. You know, there could be some dangerous technology that every sufficiently advanced civilization discovers, and that's the end. Uh, so we want the great filter to be before us. Now, if you discover a life that has arisen independently of life on Earth, then that shows that the filter almost certainly is not before that point that was reached by this independent life. So if we found, I don't know, say some squirrels that had lived on Mars and that had gone extinct, like some little rodent things. So that, that would show that it seems pretty easy to get from a planet to a squirrel <laughs> level of you know, development. Uh, if, if even in our solar system it had happened twice, I mean, then it can't be that hard. So that would cut away the place where the Great Filter could be. It would only then be between Squirrel and we are now, which is just a small part of this course of development, or after us. So it would increase the probability that it's after us. So it would be bad news. So if we found single-celled organisms on, uh, on, on Mars, that would be bad, uh, sad news. Now, if we find anything more advanced than that, it would be terrible news. It, it would suggest that we are very unlikely to uh, survive for very long as a civilization, certainly not to the point where we can colonize the world. Now, the uh, empirical data that we do not see life forms or any uh, uh, um, uh, artifacts of artificial life that we look for, some people say really is meaningless because there's a whole host of explanations why the universe can be teeming with intelligent life, but we still don't see mm. evidence for it. They don't want to come here. They're, they're, they're keeping us as a, a, a natural preserve. Uh, they, um, they, they're, uh, they, they don't like to travel. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Mm. Um, what do you think of those? I personally don't think they are plausible. Um, and, well, like a couple of different ways of trying to explain why I don't think it's possible. I mean, the first is that um, if you look at it from a game theoretic point of view, you think life, intelligent life is common, but they all decide that they don't want to do it. Well, if even just one decides to do it, to start this colonization process, they will be the ones that spread and quickly everybody or practically everybody will be of the colonizing type. Uh, so it just takes one. Uh, and if there are many, then almost certainly there would be at least one civilization that would be expansionist. And the time involved, people say, oh, it's impossible, they wouldn't have enough time. But yeah, so I don't think that either. You, you get to the point where you can build um, von Neumann probe, so-called. That is civilization seeds that can create a civilization that can send out more of these seeds. So it so becomes an exponential, yeah. an exponential. So you don't have to go from one planet to another to another in a sequence, but you go to one planet and then you send out a million probes and those go to other planets and send out. And you could colonize the galaxy within, you know, certainly within a couple of million years or so, which is trivial in, in a cosmic time scale. So I don't believe that's a plausible thing either. Um, and, and there are some further arguments like that, why I just don't think that's likely. Um, so your, your opinion would be the likelihood of intelligent life in this universe other than us is what? Not well, very high? But not very high. I think the, the simplest possibility is that uh, intelligent life is just very, very difficult to evolve. Um, it fits all the evidence. There's absolutely nothing we know that 
its intention with that. Um, and it seems to me the most likely possibility by far. That doesn't mean that there is no other intelligent life in the universe. I mean, if the universe is infinite, there certainly would be. It's just that it would be so far away from us that we will never see it. It will never interact with us. We could never even reach it if we set out to get there at the speed of light. Um, and, and that seems to me to, to be the most simple and natural explanation. We don't know for sure that it's true, but it's, that's where I would place my money. <laughs>